I'm Microsoft teaming with Microsoft Teams. I'm learning and dreaming with Microsoft Teams. The hub and the teamwork of Microsoft 365 in these four amazing times. I'm Microsoft teaming with Microsoft Teams. Yeah, with Microsoft Teams. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our latest episode of Inside Microsoft Teams. I'm your host, Stephen Rose, and I'm very excited today uh, to be not just doing a wrap up of all of the news of our most recent Ignite, but to have three people who I have had, uh, or at least two that I've had the privilege of knowing for a long time, and one that's a, you know, warm acquaintance who I've got. Kind of an outlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made it 30 seconds. I'm <laughs> But with me are the highly esteemed Mary Jo Foley, Paul Thurrett, and the lukewarm Brad Sam. So thanks, Brad, for joining us. We're excited to have you. Oh, no, boy. I'm just kidding. Actually, I met Brad, Brad for the first time in real life last year when we did and uh, uh, when we did our road race so yes. uh, in, in Orlando. So it's uh, great to have you on the show. I've done your show before, so welcome. So how about if we have each of you introduce yourselves in case there's one or two people on the planet that don't know you. <laughs> Brad, I'll let you go first. Um, I am the highly esteemed, very well known, uh, <laughs> but I'm Brad Sams. Uh, I am the executive editor for BWW Media Group, or in this instance, Petri.com, and I've been covering Microsoft for over a decade, and I've been following Stephen for, for many years on Twitter, and then uh, it was, geez, I want to say last year, but it was the year before is when we, before. we, yep, we did some go-kart <clears throat> racing and uh, got, you know, finally got to meet in person. That's awesome. So you started your career when you were five. So that's great. I love that. Paul? I uh, I actually did start my career when Brad was five. Um, I, <laughs> I am the, uh, we're going to call it the major domo of Threat.com. Uh, I've been covering Microsoft for over 25 years now. Um, I was at the at Windows IT Pro, which back in the day was Windows NT Magazine and the super site for Windows before this. And uh, now I work with Brad over at BWW. And the ever amazing and lovable Mary Jo Foley. Aww. And her cat, Sirachi, who will be making yes. an appearance at different points today. Yes, he may. He's right to my right here on my table. Um, so my name is Mary Jo Foley. I actually am the major domo domo of this group <laughs> because I've been covering technology for more than 30 years. Before Brad was born, obviously. <laughs> um and uh, I now work mostly for ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com, but I also do work for Petri.com. I do a show called MJF Chat, where I interview people in the tech industry. Thank you all for being here. I know you've had a crazy busy week, so I appreciate all of you taking time out. And with that, I would like to turn it over to producer Meg, who has two questions for each of you. So Meg, what is question number one? What is the oldest piece of tech hardware you still use? <laughs> Brad, I'm going to let you start on that one. Ooh. So mm -hmm. the oldest piece in daily operation. Well, see, this one's a little bit cheating um, because I have a daughter and she kind of inherits things as they flow downhill. Um, so we have some really old iPads. She does have a newer one. That one's probably the most, I guess, touched piece of equipment. Um, but I do have a very, very old Raspberry Pi actually up and running that I have installed some um, applications on that allow me to control it with my phone. And that thing's got to probably be, it's one of like the first or second Raspberry Pis. Paul, outside of your eight track tape that you have hooked up to your <laughs> Sonos, what is I was going to say, I do have, I have two answers. So I, I did add a, a turntable to my Sonos and uh, that's ancient technology, although it's a new yeah. turntable. I actually, outside of tech, I use things forever. I wear clothes until they're full of holes. I, I'm, <laughs> that's kind of the way I am. Um, with the nature of my job, I'm all, you know churning through things. So I was kind of racing my mind here. Like, what do I have that's really old? And oddly, it's probably the chair I'm sitting in. Um, I got my wife bought this for me for Christmas in 2001, and it was a fire sale from a startup that had gone out of business because these chairs are really expensive. And it is, I think it has an inch of dust on the bottom, you know, levels of it. And one of the arms fell off. I can see it. It's like I've had it sitting here over in the corner forever. But <laughs> so I have like, you know, I could fall off the side of it pretty easily. But I've had this thing for 20 years. Wow. Mary Jo. 
So I had a great answer to this last year because <laughs> I was still running a Dell Optiplex desktop PC that was 10 years old. Wow. As my main desktop. And then because, you know, Windows 7, end of life and all that, I switched to a Surface Laptop 3, which isn't old at all. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. But the oldest piece of tech in my house I can't say I use it regularly, but it's still here because I saw it the other day. <laughs> is my Zune HD? Oh, wow. Love it. Awesome. I still have it. It's in the drawer in my desk and um, it's blue and it has oh. some kind of an inscription. Maybe it says something like Panos Panay is pumped. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> that's not it I actually that do is. have an original Zune now that you say that. Um, yeah. The brown one, I'm sure. One I bet yeah. you have a brown. I'm just no, saying. it's black, unfortunately. I wish it was brown. <laughs> I have a red one. <laughs> oh, nice. Those are rare. They yeah. are rare. I never yeah. heard that one. All right, Meg. What is your favorite memory from your first Microsoft conference? <laughs> Ooh. Paul, I'm going to start with you on this one. Uh, boy. I mean, I... I went out to, I visited Redmond for the first time in December 1990, it was 95, 94, 95. And it was for the Boston beta, which was the first version of what became Visual Studio. Mm. And I, it, I was just so happy to be there. And I met the guy that ran what was becoming IIS at the time or whatever. And I, I, there was a break. And the funny thing, I've been to Seattle so many times, but this was the one trip where it lived up to what my expectation was, which was it was a break. And it went out into the hallway and there was this giant window looking outside. And of course it's lush and green and yeah. it was raining so hard that it was like a waterfall. <laughs> and I, I just stood there and I had lived in Phoenix at the time. So I don't really, didn't see the rain a lot. And I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I was like, this is exactly what I thought Seattle was. And then I, every time I come back, what I realized is really, it just mists all the time. Like that was very unusual, yeah. but it's a really distinct memory. I dig that. Mary Jo, your turn. Oh man. I, I don't know what year this was, <laughs> but it was one of the original professional developer conferences, PDCs. Um, and I remember being there because there were like four women, um, including me, who were there. And it was great because we never had to wait for the ladies room ever, <laughs> which like never like happened. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of like this memory in my head. I remember looking around being like, where are all the other women? And it's like, oh, wait, we're all of them. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. How things have changed. That's that is great. All right, yeah. Brad. So mine, you know, happened when color TV and radio was <laughs> invented. Uh, but Touché. so this was Touché. it wasn't a direct Microsoft event, but it was when Steve Ballmer was still doing the keynotes at CES. That was one of the first things I remember going to. And I ran into Steve Ballmer in the bathroom right before his keynote. And I was kind of like do I say anything or whatever? And we're both washing our hands. And I just kind of muttered. I was like, going to be a good keynote, Steve. And he just goes, yep. <laughs> like in his really loud, bombastic <laughs> voice. And then just walked out. Wow. I, the first time I met Steve Ballmer was at a Comdex. And he walked up to me. I was wearing a he, You Killed Kenny t-shirt. You know, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's Star like, Park. nice t-shirt. <laughs> uh, I miss that guy. I'm just yeah. going to say. Like, there's some too. good Steve Ballmer yeah. stories. <laughs> He, he was such a, I, especially at our internal conference when we did Ready, he was such an ins inspirational speaker. And take nothing away from Sacha. I love listening to Sacha. I always yeah. learn something and he's very deep. But Steve was just one of the best cheerleaders. And when he got fired up, everybody got fired up. So it was just fun watching him. And he would always, for those of you that had never seen him live, he would walk around with one of those honey bears, you know, the honey shaped bear containers. And he would sit there and just swig it right from the container because it would not only coat his throat, but continue to give him the fuel that he was burning yeah. at a yeah. tremendous rate. So he would swig the honey bear. And it was just the greatest thing. People were going, is that a honey bear? And he'd be like, developers. And then just kind of go off. I don't, I don't mean to drag this up, but I feel like you should answer those questions too, Stephen, because yeah, you came to Microsoft from outside, obviously, like everyone, I guess. And you must have uh, a, a, an answer to both those questions too, yeah. right? Um, gosh, I think my first conference was one of the pre-Ignite. It was TechEd uh, in Orlando. And I know that I had done my first overseas one was TechEd Barcelona, which was when Barack Obama became president. And oh. I remember sitting up with Steve Riley, Chris Jackson, 
um, Aaron Margosis and a few other people all night long to watch the returns and see Barack Obama become president, which was wow. crazy oh to be. I did a road in, trip, really. Yeah, and I we were in. Um, oh my God, uh, Barcelona, Spain, as that yeah. all happened. So it was yeah. that was just tremendous. And oldest piece of tech, God, I don't even know. I have so many. I take pictures of them all the time. I still find, and I still boot up to see if they work like. Yeah. old palm pilots and yeah. if i can find the adapter for it i go in and it's actually been a treasure trove because like brad i passed the stuff down to my youngest so there's all these pictures of her when she was like three four five like on these like eight bit mm -hmm. pictures of her on phones and stuff so it's become this interesting whenever i find an old piece what's on it and what am i going to find mm -hmm. so let us talk ignite uh we had so many updates on features that we had announced at our last Ignite that have come to fruition. And I think from a end user standpoint, I'm glad to see that we're saying, hey, in the fall, here's stuff that we're going to have by spring. And most of it gets delivered now by the spring, which is really great. So let's first talk about Teams. Teams, we had some new meeting modes, uh, our webinars, large meetings, encryption of multi-geo that seem to really have had a lot of impact with folks in the Azure Communication Services. So who'd like to kind of go first on your thoughts on some of the Teams announcements? I could dive in, because oh, there's one thing you didn't mention in there, Steve, and it's my favorite. Yep. Which is? Yeah. The Teams hardware that was announced. The new uh, yes. little puck things that have, I believe, seven array microphones that can then transcribe up to 10 different people in a meeting. Yep. Uh, like we've all kind of gotten, and maybe I'm just on this, I've gotten used to having transcriptions from things, but we kind of forget that when you're in a meeting in a room, that doesn't always happen. Right. And so uh, these things are coming out, I believe, later this year in private preview, and then they'll roll out sometime after that. But I think those little hardware pucks are going to be really, really neat. Mm. Awesome. You know what the best feature of those pucks is, though? is the um, belief that we're going to be in meeting rooms together again, right? <laughs> I mean, I, like that's, I, I, yeah. I love the hope that yeah. is uh, implicit yeah. in that. And can I add a moment of mobile. trivia on yeah, this? Yeah, please. Um, do you guys remember this from Build like three, four mm -hmm. years ago? They showed this conical yeah, weird. Yeah, the cone of shame. The cone right? of shame. Yeah. And everybody was trying to figure out what is that and is it ever going to be a product? So these speakers are that. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Yeah, and it also opens up the ability to be able to put your phone down with that yeah. same kind of software and be able to have that happen through a phone where you could put down two, three phones, create kind of a grid and do that. So I'm excited because I think now that we have that real-time transcription and translation is working so well that we're getting very, very close to that point of having transcription and translation in real time in Teams meetings. And I'm excited for what that's going to do as we take a look at, yeah. um, you know, diversity and inclusion and really helping people and kind of bringing things together. We're really getting close on that. Yeah, multi-user multi, multi -user detection as well, right? Where you right. identify who the user is, which is uh, very smart. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. Honestly, the inclusivity stuff in Teams is kind of incredible. A lot of the new features that were announced this week were related to uh, working with people both inside and outside of the organization. I think that's a, a great area of expansion. You know, interactive webinars, I think, was one. And um, Team Microsoft Connect. Team Connect, yeah. 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 Yep. What were your thoughts on Team Connect, Mary Jo? So I, I have a personal use case for this because mm -hmm. Petri lets me join <laughs> their team, you know, because I work by myself, I should say, right? Mm -hmm. So sure. everyone, before before I was part of their team, everyone would talk about teams and I'm like, yeah, I'm a team of one, so I don't have a team, right? right. So uh, I am part of the Petri team on their team's installation and it was kind of painful for me up till now because I have to sign in as a guest. And then if I needed to join a different team, I'd have to get out of that one and right. sign in as myself, right? right. And then right. rejoin a different team. But with Teams Connect, my understanding is I'll be able to kind of stay in the way that I work and just switch because my entire kind of guest-like presence will go with me, whichever right. team I am in. Yeah. It's much better than now where I actually will save different teams as an app through right. Edge mm -hmm. and have yep. three running right. at a time. That's exactly, so exactly what I've been doing too. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And that's just, that's hard to keep track of and it's very yep. painful. And I just, if I'm in teams, I want to stay in teams. You know, I don't want to keep switching in and out and out and then f try to figure out where, which one of these am I in now? And it's right. just, I, I think this is going to be really good for my productivity. Brad, you seem to be kind of pondering about it. Well, I, what I was going to say is, before you pod that up, I'm big into webinars because we do a ton of them. Yeah. And 
looking at, honestly, I was talking to uh, a colleague today about how we can eventually, because we got to pilot it internally to make sure it connects to all of our systems. Right. But Teams webinar for us actually is a, a really big announcement because we use a third party solution right now, but we use Teams, as Mary Jojo has pointed out, for everything else. Right. And so we're going to start that process of transitioning from external tools to just you know being holistically inside of Teams. Um, and so that was a, another really big announcement that is, while interesting from a, a journalistic perspective, but from a, a work perspective, um, was a big deal too. Yeah, I think we heard from a lot of IT pros that said that's great that we're using things like OBS and Wirecast and stuff along that line. We'd love to, this is great. Start to bring more of those tools mm -hmm. into the product. So I'm excited to see the direction that we go with that. But I agree. I think we're going to make things a lot easier. Any I, other thoughts? On, yeah, yeah, I mean, Paul? the multi-geo stuff, I, I, you know, obviously this is one of Microsoft's big strengths. In fact, my, uh, Brad just this morning was pointing out, you know, that Microsoft is opening a new uh, data center region in China. And I think this regional approach to cloud computing is what's going to put Microsoft's solutions over the top, right? And the need for, uh, to respect regional or country-based or uh, ge whatever the ge uh, ge geography, sorry, of it is, um, you know, the different rules and regulations and, and so forth. And I, that stuff is just critical. You know? yeah. So I think that's really smart. Yeah, I think especially in, in Europe and as we look at GDPR and things like that and data residency, yeah. that's so incredibly important. It's just getting folks. rid of a blocker, you know, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and maybe anticipating future blockers too. Mm -hmm. Mary Jo, any other thoughts on any? Um, I thought kind of one of the unsung Teams announcements was the greater integration between Teams and Dynamics 365. Uh, because I feel like those two things, even though it's the same company, a lot of times there isn't a lot of direct integrations between them. And uh, especially the idea of being able to do team calling within various Dynamics 365 apps like marketing and sales, I think that's going to be really big for companies who have both Dynamics and Office 365, Microsoft 365. I agree. Yeah, I think that that's the feeling. Huge. I, Teams is just the center now, right? It, 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 mm -hmm. If there yeah. is a Microsoft solution, a third-party solution, right, out there that is in any way makes sense to have, you know, have it be in Teams, it's there. You know, the apps are there, the integration is there. Um, a, a bunch of the announcements this week are about that. Uh, the power, the PowerPoint functionality that's coming to Teams and so forth. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, a team Teams, you can you, you can live in Teams now. It is literally what Outlook was, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Well, you, you and I had talked about this when we mm -hmm. did those M365 shows together that Satya had said that Teams is really the next Windows. It is the right. new Windows, mm -hmm. and we started digging into that. But we can see now with what's going on that it really, really is the new Windows, yeah. that it yeah. is that Chrome that you'll live in all day long, that everything right. starts to plug into. And outside of email, which the role of email is changing dramatically on how people use it, it really is where people are now spending their day. And come on, email's coming, right? I mean, <laughs> it, just, it just sort of feels that way. I know nothing. I mean, it's it's sort of there, right? There yeah. is a lot of integration now between Outlook and Teams. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sure. So, yeah. It's getting there. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff. And then what else? Azure Communication Service and Viva. Let's take a moment to talk about Viva now. Although Viva was not an Ignite announcement, it happened a few right. weeks before. We really finally saw a lot of sessions and people starting to ask questions. What are your, what are your overall thoughts on Viva? I, th I think it's an interesting way for Microsoft to make use of various technologies that are already there in house and kind of present them to users in new ways. You know, making people think about new ways to use Yammer, making them able to use things like the um, Project Cortex technologies uh, through topics, uh, Microsoft Learn coming through the learning app. I, I, I think it's a good way to kind of surface up a lot of different technologies in a new kind of packaging that'll mm -hmm. be uh, you know, useful, especially when you're onboarding new people, <laughs> even when work from home is over. Right. I'm going to ruin this for you, Mary Jo, because <laughs> it, it, Viva in, in many ways is like the ribbon, right? It is about exposing things to people that in many cases <laughs> were there, obviously they're being improved, but they might not have known about or might not have had access to. And I, you know, and, and we just talked about teams, a big piece of this, of course, is all mm -hmm. the teams integration. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because that's increasingly is where pe the, the people are. Yeah, Thanks for and, and, ruining it. I, I, I always can count on Paul to ruin a moment. <laughs> you can always count on me. <laughs> to, to go back to Brad's comment about AI, I think what's interesting is, is that we see AI moving from this sort of nebulous technology to mm -hmm. this 
assistive technology that yeah. raises things up to you at the appropriate points in time. So I think that that's kind of a key piece. Brad, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I just really appreciate that Microsoft is reaffirming the fact that they are SharePoint and everything is SharePoint from the top <laughs> yeah. down because now we have SharePoint inside of SharePoint uh, with Teams. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a, I think it's a smart play at the end of the day, right? It's a natural evolution of having a whole bunch of uh, services that kind of exist in places and bringing them to where the user is, at least in my experience, the majority of the day inside of Teams. So you don't have to leave that that window to be able to get everything that you need. So it makes sense on paper. The SharePoint was probably daunting, is probably daunting for a lot of people. Yeah. And by you know surfacing that functionality elsewhere in a place, like you said, in a place where they are, I think it makes tons of sense. Other announcements this week that really impressed you, that excited you. Just talk about the power stuff. Uh, power platforms, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, Power Automate app for Windows 10, very interesting. Still haven't looked at it yet. This is something I'm super interested in. It probably get started with that across, uh, over the weekend. But, you know, this um, uh, ability to automate desktop app functionality is uh, huge. And it's, if, when, it, it's something I hadn't thought of, but once they announced it, I thought, yeah, that's the missing piece in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, PowerFX, which I think of as kind of the glue, the you know, what we would have called a scripting language maybe uh, back in the day, 20 years yeah. ago. And uh, Power BI Premium, which is more of a Mary Jo thing. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Quantum, you know. He's yeah. like, punts yeah, it yeah. to me because he's like, yeah, make something up. Mary Just say some like enterprise BI, words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, um, I think all of these technologies are interesting because they're trying to do what Microsoft used to talk about a long time ago, democratize technology. Yep. And, uh, you know, the idea is, with especially th with things like no code, low code, you're trying to make the technology accessible to people who don't call themselves developers, right? And right. if you if you are targeting the audience of people who are Excel jockeys and you're like, hey, you kind of are a developer, right? <laughs> but what if we give you this language called PowerFX and you can really develop some interesting things? Um, I, I feel like it's it's Microsoft coming back to the old, let's democratize things and make make them available to more people at volume yep. and a lower cost yeah and i think we have different tiers we have citizen developers we have you know true developers and now there's sort of different flavors sort of like you know the way that we had like our you know light sequel full sequel etc that you could be leveraging and using there's now those different ways of bringing that together so mm -hmm. yeah. if you were an it pro what is the one area or I want to pick one area of sessions that I should go back and really review and share with my team? What is that topic that we should be going back and take a look at? So, Brad, I'll let you go first on that. So this is an announcement from Ignite and something that I think a lot of people should really pay attention to is that password authentication with Azure AD is now generally available. Microsoft's been talking about this for a while and yep. it was a little little confusing when they, it was like two years ago when they started talking about that, but now that it's available to everybody who's using Azure AD, uh, I think that's where I would put some effort into because, you know, the best security starts out with, with smart employees. I agree. Very right, Joe. Um, I think if you haven't already looked at the industry cloud announcements, you might want to go take a look at those. Um, you know, this is not for every IT pro, but the idea of what Microsoft's doing is something you should be aware of, which is they're taking common building blocks of technology, wrapping them together and making them available as a full platform to you so that you can build on top of them. And I, I feel like a lot of IT pros I talk to about Azure, they're like, yeah, you know, it's too much for me. Uh, it's, it's too complicated. But if Microsoft can add a level of abstraction, which is what these industry clouds are, I, I think it makes it more accessible to a wider group of people. No, I, I agree. And I think with industry clouds, we also get predetermined sets of things like right. security so that folks can walk in, which we've had a lot of products. You can say, yeah. you know, we're medical, et cetera. But to really walk in and say, great, now we're at a base. What's important to us also based on geography and locale that they can then figure out what it takes to become right. compliant. Because HIPAA compliancy yeah. is really a hornet's nest when we take a look at that as is yeah. financial and things like that. So I think it's great that we're moving in that direction and kind of building that GCC concept across different, different uh, industries. Paul. 
You know, when you originally asked that question, I thought, you know, this is a hard thing to answer because it's going to depend on the, your focus, right? right? You might be an exchange administrator. You might be a Windows Server administrator. So there are announcements across the board, all this. The entire Microsoft 365 stack, we got a new version of Windows Server coming. There was, they didn't announce it during the show per se, but there were a bunch of blog posts related to uh, changes to Windows 10 for IT pros and so forth. So that stuff's all out there, you know, uh, from a single feature in Microsoft 365 all the way up to the big stuff, Azure, et cetera. But I think the big thing that I would uh, focus on for this year would be that return to work aspect, this notion that we're the new normal is going to be hybrid work. And what is that going to look like? It's going to differ by organization, by need, et cetera. Obviously, some people have to be in an office for whatever reason. Some people don't have to be. But what does this future look like? And what's the infrastructure you need to support this hybrid work of the future? Um, and I think a lot of it's going to be based around teams. So frankly, if I had to pick one thing, I'd say you want to focus on teams. It's, it's very interesting. I think if we were to ask people right now, where do they think they're going to be in three years? It it's, would be really, really hard to say. We have some companies that said we're going to stay permanently. Uh, I've said to many people, if you're looking for a new job that is not in your own state, now is the time to apply to it because <laughs> yeah. those days of people saying, well, we're only going to hire someone who's local for this role. We don't feel that this can be done remotely. It's really hard to say that with any confidence. And I agree. I think Tools like Teams and other ones are making that even better to do. We've done a lot of great stuff with mobile to get the mobile client finally a lot closer to where the desktop client is. We're bringing a lot of different stuff to web, um, yep. you know, and I think that's going to be the other thing, too, is our, as we start to see more of that move, are we going to see the desktop app move away a little more quickly because of this? Because when people are working remotely, they kind of want to pick the device that they want to work on. So looking at desktop versus web and you know the new generation that's all born in the cloud and does everything through a browser and folks that are old like me who still love to use desktop apps do you think that this is now causing a shift in that the new yeah you know what software it is that we're doing now that shift was already happening uh, what it, it, it's an accelerant for that yeah. shift I, I think that's what it is and so yep. if, if you would ask people a year and a half ago where do you think you're going to be in three years the answer would be completely different from what they would say mm -hmm. today would be completely different from what they might say in a year mm -hmm. but I, I think these trends were happening, but the pandemic and then our response to it has accelerated uh, maybe things that were already happening. Right? I, agree. I agree. Final thoughts. Brad, we'll start with you. Um, you know, Ignite is always fun because there's so much content that comes out of it that it's almost impossible to absorb all of it. And then trying to go back and watch the sessions later uh, to re-educate yourself is always a good strategy. And honestly, I do it a lot of times because we'll get press releases about stuff that's coming out. It's like, what is this again? And you go back and just pop into a session Ignite and uh, you can get that education really, really quickly. Paul? Yeah, I, I, I despair of what he said because he's exactly right. This is a, a, something we had been doing for years where you go to a show and you're busy and you can't go to the sessions. And, you know, I would load uh, videos of some of the sessions and watch them on the plane ride home. And, and there's like three layers of learning that can occur in a show like Ignite. There's that we get pre-briefed, of course, you get the book of news and everything because we're in the media. And then the event happens and there's some surprises that day. But the real meat of it in many ways is in those sessions. And there are always surprises and always bits of news. I was just writing up a story about um, Microsoft is working to consolidate all of its edge versions across desktop and mobile into a single code base. It was right. never mentioned in a keynote. They didn't mention this up front or anything like that. And there's a lot of little things like that. And if people are, whatever area you're in, you should go to the Ignite site, look up that product or service or whatever it is, and, and maybe cherry pick a few uh, topics from the sessions. Love it. Mary Jo. Maybe this is because I live by myself in 600 square feet that I feel this way. But um, I like these virtual events because it, even though we're not there in person to lift a pint and toast each other, at least you feel like you're connecting with people, right? Yeah. Um, and just seeing Donna and Seth and Rick and you, all, all of our friends who we usually see in person virtually, right. it makes it feel like, okay, we're not there, but it's kind of the next best thing. I, yeah, I think, we're all still yeah. out there, you know, yeah. and we all want the same thing, really. I mean, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I miss I miss hugging people. I miss yeah, seeing I people. Too. I, I miss just yep. yeah, exactly sitting, finding everybody at the bar. At what's the, the world going to be like for huggers now? <laughs> I'm a hugger. <laughs> I'm a hugger. You know, yeah. no, we're all going to be so weird now. Like <laughs> now, <laughs> like now are, we're going to be weird. You almost have to have like a button. <laughs> I accept hugs. Please do not hug. You know all of that yeah, sort of stuff yeah, so yeah. that you know how to react to see people. Right. Yeah, I I I can't wait to get back in person to see all of you yeah. again yeah. and 
yeah, sit down, have a beer, just sort of have some unfiltered, uncensored chat and see who sort of tries to pop in and go, hi, I just wanted to say I really like you. And I'll, you're like, hey, sit down, have a beer. And they're like, what? I'm not worthy. Let me join the family <laughs> of the gods. And you guys enjoy that, too. I've seen the look in your face. You're like, yes, you're worthy. You can have a beer, but you have to go stand over there. So yeah. <laughs> I can still hear you, Stephen. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I miss that. And it, it is always great when I see a familiar name or person, whether it's on Twitter or show up in a session and they say hi. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. It's like, hey, how are you? We've made lifelong friends of these shows, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No doubt yeah. about it. No, I agree. So I can't wait to kind of see what's next. And has. Mm -hmm. And I think you're exactly, you hit it on the head, Paul. It's going to be this new hybrid, new norm and yeah. how we do that and how we come across. But I'm excited. I think you know we had some great announcements. I think there's certainly some great stuff. And I want to make a quick pitch for the new Teams doc page. If you go out to uh, docs.microsoft.com slash Teams, we have reorganized the Teams doc page into a plan prepare for adoption, which is something you should do before you deploy the product, is actually train your people and show them how to use stuff and why it's important. Deploy, manage, and secure. So please go check that out. Great stuff from Ignite as always. Please make sure to check out Brad and Paul's show and Mary Jo's show and their pages and all the great stuff that they do because they are wise and they have been at this for <laughs> well, at least Paul and Mary Jo are we wise. Can be wise. Long time. <laughs> and Brad adds a lot of color, which we there are different kinds of wise. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I want to do a quick roundtable and ask where each of you, where you would like folks to go to learn more about you and the shows that you do and all the great stuff. So Brad, I'll start with you. How do people learn more about Brad Sams and all the great work that you're doing? Yeah, so the easiest way to find me is on Twitter at BD Sams, or you can go to Petri.com and you'll see all of my lovely and very knowledgeable articles. Um, but that's probably the best way. Or you can find myself and Paul on First Ring Daily, which is a podcast we do Monday through Friday. All right, Paul. So, unfortunately, my last name is horrible to spell, and that's where everything is. So, my <laughs> website is therot.com, T H U R R O T T. And I am, of course, at Therot at Twitter because I don't want anyone to find me, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I should. I wish my last name was Smith. But. <laughs> it's all right. My last name is Rose, and people still mess it up. I get Rhodes, Rose, and people think it's too easy if it's not difficult, so it messes <laughs> you up. Mary Jo, same question. Well, luckily, Foley is easy, and I am Mary Jo Foley on Twitter. Also, all about Microsoft.com. That is me on ZDNet. And every Wednesday, you can find me and this Therat guy doing Windows Weekly on the Twit Network, twit.tv slash www. Which is also a great podcast that I encourage you all to download. It works great while you're driving and wanting to catch up on stuff. I want to thank all three of you for taking time out of this incredibly busy week here at Ignite and taking some time to talk and sharing your thoughts as always. I certainly appreciate it. Our next episode, Team Security. We're going to dig in deep with our engineering team on all of the new announcements plus more. So you certainly want to check that out. I'm Stephen Rose, your host. This has been Inside Microsoft Teams. We will see you again very, very soon. Mm -hmm.